join me in the call to worship. Now is the moment of grace. This is the hour of blessing. Today is the day of salvation. Here, Here is the path to new life. life. Already joy is abounding and love is flowing. For this, this is the day God has made. Let us joyfully to sing and praise our God. God. And our uh, opening hymn, I sing the mighty power of God. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand to me for it.
Heavenly Father, as we give back to this ministry, it's our deepest desire that lives will be touched and changed by what we have given this day. In your holy name, amen. Come on up, kids. How's everybody doing today? It's good to see you. Now, I have some pictures, and I want to see if you know who they are. Are you ready? Abraham Lincoln. You want to hold that there, Willie? Okay. You can do it wherever. <laughs> Oh, you're way too old. You're way too old. Louie's dad. Okay? Okay? It's not Louie. Okay. Um, good job. Tom Brady, yeah. what they all have in common. Stand up and stand up and show everybody. Let everybody see. Now they all have something in common. What would that be? They're all living creatures. No. <laughs> well they are, but no, I mean, that's not what I'm looking for. Um, these three I have no idea. <laughs> So we need to remember that. Can you remember that? That we all have a perfect Father, too. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for godly dads. And we also thank you that when our dads fall short, that we can turn to you. And we know we have a perfect and right Father. And so we praise you for that. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Get your treats. joys and concerns from the church family. First of all, we, we, I want to tell all the fathers here, happy Father's Day. Um, and also, also I want to recognize that Norma and Tammy are here today. And it's a hard day for them because Tammy lost her father this week and Norma lost her husband. And uh, so as we celebrate Father's Day and the joy of fathers, um, know that the girl is in heaven right now with his father, and hopefully that will bring you comfort. But we want to continue to pray for you and pray for comfort for you. Are there others? Let's pray. Gracious Father, as we come to this place, we come worshiping you and praising you for what you do in our lives. We're so grateful that we have a Father in heaven that we can turn to, and you never let us down. You don't always give us the answers that we desire, the answers that we seek, 
but you always give, it, give us an answer that is perfect and right and just. And we praise you that you're a God that we can talk to, that you're a God that's intimately involved in our lives. And Heavenly Father, it's a, it's a difficult world out there. Life is tough. We can come into the four walls of the sanctuary and worship and praise you for this brief hour and try to shut the outside world out. But it's still there. So we ask for your strength and guidance as we maneuver through this world and the courage to stand up for truth and what is right. Heavenly Father, we know there are people that need your special touch this day. We think of the Himes family and the Webb family, especially Tammy and Norma that are here today. Give them comfort that only you can give, hope that only you can give. Wrap your loving arms around them and may they sense your presence this day. We also think of Jen and Phyllis and Ruth and Abby's aunt and Christy. Heavenly Father, you know their needs better than we do. We pray that you would touch them with your healing power, that they would sense your presence in a great way this day. And Father, we're so grateful that you have a plan for each of us, that we're in your thoughts, that you love us, and we know that you only want what is best for us. And so we praise you this day. Heavenly Father, as we come into this place, we come and we look at that empty cross. But we know it's no longer empty. And we remember Jesus. Without the sacrifice that Jesus made, we would have no hope today. But because of that sacrifice, because of that great love, we have hope. Hope beyond this life into all eternity. And so we praise you for that. And as we remember Jesus, we remember his words. These are his words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but with the Lord us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. This time, our hymn of preparation, Speak, O Lord. If you are able, please stand.
morning's scripture message comes from 1 Kings chapter 19, beginning with verse 1. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have a message for us this day. Give us understanding. Give us your truth so that when we leave this place, we'll be changed by hearing a word from you. And we praise you for that. In your name, amen. 1 Kings chapter 19, beginning with verse 1, is entitled, Elijah Flees Horeb. Listen for the words of the Lord. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done, and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a message to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there. While he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once, an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, go up and eat for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. Next is entitled, The Lord Appears to Elijah. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He, he replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he put up, pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth, mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, tore down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. This is God's holy word. <laughs> now, it sounds like Elijah was a little bit discouraged. Have you ever been discouraged? that by all your good efforts, things just aren't going the way you wanted them to go. And so you get a little bit discouraged. That's kind of how he was today. And so I want to talk to dads. When you get discouraged, there's advice in this scripture. Moms, when you get discouraged with life, Elijah has a, a lesson for you to learn. And so that's what I want to talk about today. Now there were two boys and their parents, they just, they didn't know what to do with these boys. They were a menace in the neighborhood. They kept pulling pranks on people, and they were stealing from people as well. And they just were at a loss what they could do with their children. And so they thought about it, and they said, we're going to talk to the pastor, and maybe the pastor will be able to talk to these boys and maybe give them some advice. So when uh, they went to the pastor and they said, can you help us? Can you at least talk to our boys? They're just, they're being so bad. 
And so the pastor agreed to talk to the boys. He, they took them down to the church and they waited outside the office. Now the pastor thought divide and conquer. And so he took the youngest boy in first. And a little boy sat in the chair and, and the pastor was at his desk. And the little boy was quite nervous and he was kind of fidgety. And the pastor finally looked, finally looked at him and he said, do you know where God is? Now the little boy wasn't really sure what he was talking about or what he wanted from him. And so he sat there and he didn't say anything. And pretty soon the pastor looked at him and he said, do you know where God is? The little boy was still confused, still didn't understand what he wanted. So then the pastor in a louder voice said, do you know where God is? But the little boy just kind of shrunk back. He was frightened. Finally, the pastor got up out of his desk, walked up to him and pointed in his face and said, do you know where God is? The boy was so frightened that he jumped out of the chair. He went running out, ran past his brother and ran all the way home, went up the stairs and crawled, crawled in his bed and covered up with sheets. Now, the older brother followed him, and he went in his bedroom, and he said, Billy, are you okay? What, what's going on? And he said, oh, he said, we're really in a lot of trouble. He said, I, I mean it. We're, we're in so much trouble, Johnny. He said, what do you mean? He said, well, God's missing, and they think we took him. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever asked the question, where is God? Do you ever feel like God might be missing? I think that's how Elijah felt. After all, he was obedient to God. He had done everything God had asked him to do, and the people rejected God's word. And to make it even worse now, Jezebel was trying to kill him. Let's look at verse 3. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there. I find it quite interesting that the man that defeated 850 false prophets was afraid of Jezebel. I find that interesting. I mean, after defeating all those false prophets, you would think that Elijah would have felt invincible. Instead, he was exhausted. I would have thought he would have welcomed Jezebel's challenge. Come on, bring it on, bring it on, lady, bring it on. But instead, he retreated. The fact was this, Elijah's life was in danger. Jezebel wanted him dead. So Elijah ran away, and he hid in a cave. He hid there in order to take control of his fear. He hoped to regain his strength while he was there. Elijah needed to know that God was still with him. He needed to know that. He needed just to hear a word from God. And as we look at verses 11 and 12, the Lord said, he got his word, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. Elisha looked for God in the wind, didn't he? But he wasn't there. He looked for them in the earthquake. God wasn't there. He looked for him in the fire, and he wasn't there. And then when we hit verse 13, when Elijah, or let's go to verse 12, after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled, it, put on, pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then the voice said to him, Elijah, what are you doing here? There was silence and a gentle whisper. It was God. 
finally, Elijah encountered God. God was really with him. In fact, God had been with Elijah the whole time. Where is God in your life? Are you able to hear his voice? If you're having trouble finding God, if you're having trouble hearing God, I think that we can learn something from Elijah this day. Let's go back to verse 4. While he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. And I think we can learn a lesson here from Elijah. We need time for ourselves, don't we? When pressures become too difficult, when there's too much to do and no time to do it, we need to stop. And we need to take time for ourselves. Just think of Elijah's situation. He was drained. He was afraid. He was under a great deal of pressure. Elijah needed that cave. He needed to get away from all the pressures of this life. He needed time on his own. He needed time for himself. Elijah, it says, was so desperate that he just wanted to die. Elijah needed time for himself. He needed silence. He needed solitude. He needed time to regroup, and sometimes we do too. Do you get so busy that you don't know whether you're coming or going? That you don't even have time to think because you're rushing from place to place? There's absolutely nothing wrong with setting aside time be by yourself. I call it me time. We need time for ourselves, don't we? Time to rest. Time to recharge. Time to be silent. Time to atone. Folks, sometimes our lives get so busy, it's exhausting. It's overwhelming. And that's a time when we need to just get away. And if we don't get away once in a while, we will find ourselves just like Elijah. We will only see the problems in our lives. We will only see the struggles. We'll only see the difficulties. And we won't be able to see God. As we look at verses 9 and 10, there he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. We learn from Elijah, don't we? That we need time for ourselves. Also, we need time for God. We look at Elijah's situation, and we wonder why he felt so bad. He had seen God in miraculous ways, and yet he wanted to die. He had no hope. I think in all the busyness that Elijah forgot to spend time with God. You see, Elijah needed alone time in the cave, but more importantly, he needed time with God. He needed God time. We all know from experience that our relationships suffer when we don't spend enough time with the ones we love. Our lives are so full of distractions, interruptions, compromises, and just filled with so much stuff that sometimes God gets pushed out, doesn't he? And just like Elijah, we need to make time for God. Do you hear me? We need to take time for God, and we need to just sit in his presence quietly, undistracted, in peace, we need to listen for his voice, to hear a word from God. You see, we tend to look for God in the big things, don't we? In the earthquakes, in the wind, in the fire, that's where we're looking for God. 
and we find him in our alone time, in his quiet, still voice. It was only when Elijah was in the cave, when Elijah was in silence, that he was able to hear God. God speaks to us in ways we don't expect. See, Elijah expected God to speak in that powerful wind, like he did in Pentecost. Elijah expected God to speak in the burning bush like he did to Moses. He expected God in spectacular ways, but in the presence of God and the voice of God, those are the times that we experience his gentle whisper, that soft, still voice. And so we don't hear God sometimes because we're not in a quiet place with God. We need time to really listen. We need time to really hear what he's saying to us. We need times of solitude and silence. And we need time alone with God. Elijah found that silence and solitude, didn't he? And it made a difference in his relationship. It is then our relationship is strengthened. It's renewed, it's restored when we take that alone time. And then we can focus on what really matters in this life. And then we'll know what God is really saying to us. Have you ever had God speak to you and not listen? I mean, not be obedient? I'll give you an example. One Sunday I was leaving here it was when I, I was preaching, well, actually it was at the two churches when I was preaching at West Liberty and Wolf Creek, and I was leaving and a message in my, my head, now I know it was a message from God, he said, stop and see Mary, Mary Hawk. And I was tired. I had just preached two sermons, and I thought, I'll do it this week, and I'm going to come. You know, I didn't have another opportunity. Mary died that week. So I want to give you some advice. If you hear God speaking, obey immediately. Don't put it off because you might regret it. I've always regret, regretted that. I can't go back and change it. What's done was done. So listen to God when he speaks to you. Now, one evening, Sam was leaving Bible study. And in this Bible study, they were learning that just that. They were learning about listening for God, hearing God's word, and be obedient when we hear God's word. And so as he was driving home, this voice, this small steel whisper, said, stop and buy a gallon of milk. Now, he thought that's silly. First of all, he was lactose intolerant, so he knew it wasn't for him. <laughs> but it kept nagging at him. So when he got to the nearest store, he pulled in, and he went in and bought a gallon of milk, having no idea what he was going to do with this milk. And then as he drove, all of a sudden he was going to places that he had never been before. And he was getting into kind of the bad part of town, but he kept driving and all of a sudden something told him to turn right and stop at the little white house. And he did. He thought, this is crazy. But he took the milk and he went to the door and he knocked on the door. And a young man said, you know, can I help you? And he said, I know this is going to sound crazy, but something's been telling me to give you this gallon of milk. And the guy looked, he said, it's not crazy at all. My wife and I have been praying. Two, two days ago, we ran out of milk. Don't have any money to buy food for our baby. So we've been praying for this milk. <laughs> God speaks to us even today. He spoke to Elijah way back then. God speaks to us. And if we look at scripture in Psalm 46, it says, Be still and know that I am God. Have you ever took the time to be still? And then you hear the voice of God. And you think, That's God. I know it's him. I hear him. Sometimes we need to just stop and be still, don't we? You need to just stop and be alone with God. Push away all the outside distractions. Oh, for heaven's sakes, there's so many of them. We need to turn that TV off. 
we need to, to mute our cell phones. We have to go in a closet and shut the door, but we need to lock out the world and push away those distractions and make time for God. It's okay to have alone time. It's okay to say to someone, no, I just want to stay home alone tonight. <coughs> we need to take a break from the busyness of our lives. We need to have alone time. Because it is then, it's not in the earthquakes, it's not in the wind, it's not in the fire, but in that still, small voice, we can hear the whisper of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're grateful this day that you still speak to us. Now make us listen. Give us the strength that we can push away everything else. The worries, the cares, all the stuff we have to do, push it away and stop and listen to you. Because that's when you speak to us. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that you still speak to your people today. We ask you to give us a word. Whether it's a, a mission that you have for us, whether it's words of comfort, words of hope, no matter what it is, we pray that you will touch our lives this day, that you will speak to us, that you will encourage us. We're thankful this day. We praise you. And we're grateful for the sacrifice Jesus made for each of us. That gives us the hope. And I always go back to that Advent wreath. Hope, peace, love, joy. We can have it all when we have that center candle, the Christ candle, when we have you. And so we praise you this day. And we thank you. We thank you that you love us. You first love us in your holy name and in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our closing hymn this day is This Is My Father's World. If you are able, please stand. Take time for God. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen.